you will hear a student called Janet talking on the phone to the manager of a sports centre about a job. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. In the exam, you would have 30 seconds to look at the questions. Pause the recording for 30 seconds now. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hello, White Water Sports Centre. Hello, I wanted to inquire about a job at the centre. Right, I'll just put you through to the manager. Hello, Steve Thompson speaking. The manager's name is Steve Thompson. So Steve Thompson has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hello, White Water Sports Centre. Hello, I wanted to inquire about a job at the centre. Right, I'll just put you through to the manager. Hello, Steve Thompson speaking. Hello, um, my name's Janet Willis. Um, I'm looking for a part-time job and I saw an ad saying that you have some vacancies. I was wondering what sort of people you're looking for. Well, at present we're looking for a part-time pool attendant. I don't know if you're interested in that. Oh yes, definitely. OK. Well, have you done this sort of job before? Oh yes, I've spent the last three summers working for a children's summer camps, so I did a lot of pool supervision. And I'm actually a sports student. Water sports is my special area. OK. Well, no need to ask if you can swim, then. No, I'm certainly not afraid of the water. So what does the job at the pool involve? You'd mainly be responsible for supervising the swimmers. We have to watch them all the time, obviously, in case of accidents. So you'd have regular shifts there. OK. Then, as well as that, you'd have to look after the equipment that's used by the beginners' classes. Right. And would I be involved in teaching them at all? I'd be quite interested in that. Well, they have their own instructor, so that's not really part of the job. The attendance job does involve taking regular water quality tests, but you wouldn't be involved in cleaning the pool or anything like that. OK. And the ad said you wanted someone just twice a week? Yes, that's right. Can I choose which days? Uh, well, if you'd rung up earlier, you could have done, but I'm afraid it's got to be Mondays and Wednesdays. We got someone for Tuesdays and Thursdays, and the weekends are already fully staffed. Is that going to be a problem for you? No, that should be all right. And the ad said it was evening work, right? Yeah, you start at 6 and the pool closes at 9.30, but you wouldn't get away until 10 by the time you've checked the lockers and changing rooms. Fine. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. In the exam, you would have 20 seconds to look at the questions. Pause the recording for 20 seconds now. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. And how much do you pay? The basic hourly rate is $15, but it would go up to 19 for someone with the right qualifications. Well, I've got life-saving certificates and first aid qualifications. Oh. Well, with that and your experience, you'd probably get the maximum rate then. Obviously, you'd have to come along for an interview if you're interested. Oh, it sounds just the job I'm looking for. Shall we fix a time for the interview now? OK. Uh, it's Janet, isn't it? Yep, yeah, Janet Willis. How about Friday morning, Janet? Around 11? Oh, sorry. I have lectures, but I could make the afternoon. 2pm? Fine. And can I just check on where you are? Is it Finden Avenue? No, it's 23 to 27 Farndon Avenue. That's F-A-R-N-D-O-N. It's off Eastgate. East Gate. Fine. I'll look forward to meeting you then. OK. So if you need to phone me before then, you can get through to me directly on 053 210. Is there anything I need to bring along to the interview? Well, you do need to fill in an application form. I'll put one in the post for you so you can fill that in and bring it along. You don't want me to post it back to you? No. Just remember to bring it along with you. 
What about references? Should I bring any? Nah, but do have your certificates with you when you come. We need to see those. Great. Thanks very much then. I'll see you on Friday. Bye. Bye. Section 2. You will hear a library assistant talking about the library she works in. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 11 to 15. Hi, can I help you? Um, yes. I wanted to join the library. OK. First of all, let me show you around the library and explain a few things for you. OK. Now we're here at the main entrance. You can see the reception, which is where you bring back and take out books. And also, we can order books and answer your questions there. Mm -hmm. Next to the reception, where you can see those old desks, is where we keep the magazines, because you can sit down and read there. They're divided into sections for sciences, geography, arts, etc. Uh, then, at the back of the library, you can see the section for old books. Next to that is where the books proper start. That used to be the science section. But now, on those shelves, you'll find the art section. We had a big reorganisation in the summer, which I think has made it clearer. Oh. <laughs> the numbering is standard, so you should be able to find what you want quite easily. However, if you can't find something, it probably means it's been borrowed. OK, then in the corner, next to the reference section, is where we thought it was quietest and away from the phones and printers and things, so we've put the study desks there. They all have computer access if you need it for your laptop. No. We do ask that you don't just read magazines there, though. OK, uh, then there's the reference section, where you can look up the files. Then, as we come back to the main entrance, is the next section, where we used to have the languages. It got very busy and noisy, so when we moved everything round, we decided to put the law books here. Also, because it's a smaller section, it fits quite well here. Ah. OK, then, we're back at the main entrance. Over there, by reception, there's a door that goes to the extension. And we have further sections, such as languages and study desks through there. So you could have a look round when we've finished. Then, just between reception and the door here, is where we decided to put the computers. But the computer magazines are in the magazine section, as we found too many went missing here. <laughs> OK, is that everything? You now have 30 seconds to read questions 16 to 20.
That's great, thanks. Can you just tell me a bit about borrowing and the rules and whatever? Of course. Over the last two months, we've been introducing a new system for this, and you can now take books out for six weeks. That's generally enough for most people. We usually get books back within 30 days. Of course, you may decide to renew the period. You used to have to come in to get the book stamped because we don't like doing it over the phone as there's no record of it. But now you can do all that via email. Oh. If you do forget to renew, then we do make a charge, I'm afraid. That helps our costs, of course, but we do insist on it. The good news is that there is only one charge. I know some libraries charge one pound for one week and then it goes up with each week it's late. We ask for one pound fifty, as we think that's high enough to stop people being overdue. <laughs> The other thing you may want to know is what you do about books that are not on the shelves. We do have a system for reserving them. All you have to do is fill in a yellow form behind those blue ones on the desk uh -huh. and give it to someone at reception. We'll let you know when it comes in. Also, sometimes you will need a journal article that we don't have but can get from other libraries. So we offer an ordering service if you need it. Now, if you'd like to fill in this form here... Now turn to section 3 on page 6 of your listening test booklet. Section 3. You will hear a student, Sandra, talking to a student advisor about her approaching exam. First, you will have half a minute to look at questions 21 to 30. Now listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions 21 to 30. I've got an exam tomorrow and I'm worried about how it will go. Do you have any tips? I think I'm well prepared. I've done all the revision and I've been practising lots of exam questions, but I still feel nervous about the exam itself. I know what you mean, but if you're well prepared, you should be fine. You just need to stay calm and keep reminding yourself that you are prepared. That's easy to say, but in an exam, unexpected things happen. Well, there are a few things that I found helpful. You don't want to run out of energy or feel sleepy during the exam, so make sure you eat something beforehand. Also, it's a good idea to leave home early to allow for any traffic jams or parking problems. You don't want to arrive late or even worse, miss the exam altogether. That's good advice. But if I get there too early, I might start getting nervous while I'm waiting. That can happen, especially if you start talking to others about the exam. You know how they can start saying things like, there's bound to be a question on such and such, or most people failed this subject last year. I found that this kind of talk can just make you panic. So if you arrive very early, read through your notes while you are waiting. I think you'll find it helps you to stay calm. OK. What about during the exam? I keep thinking about the things that can go wrong. Well, I think the most important piece of advice would be to read the instructions and questions carefully. Make sure you know how many questions and sections there are so that you don't miss any. Then make sure you know how you're expected to answer them. Yeah, it would be terrible to fail because I missed a whole question or section. That's right. 
Timing is also important. You don't want to miss a question because you run out of time either. Allocate a time for each question and stick to it. And because timing is vital during an exam, I always wear a watch just in case there isn't a clock in the exam room. It helps to keep you on track. Also, if you see that time is running out, briefly answer or just guess the answer to as many of the questions as you can. Yes, especially for multiple choice questions, I could be lucky and select the correct one. True. Even if you don't know the answer, you could still gain valuable marks by guessing. Another important thing is to write the number of words required for an essay question. If your essay is too long or too short, you could lose a lot of marks. You could also waste a lot of time. And I have seen students do badly because they spent too much time on one essay, then didn't have enough time left to complete another one. So look to see how many marks are allocated for each essay and divide your time accordingly. Thanks. Look, this is all terrific advice. But what if I suddenly start to panic or get a memory block in the middle of the exam? Well, you have to think positively. You know you are prepared and you know that you can pass. As soon as you feel yourself starting to get panicky, relax and take slow, deep breaths. You should allow yourself to take a few seconds to stretch your arms, legs, neck and back occasionally too. I found that this helps. It can also be useful if you start to feel physically tired during the exam. Yes, I can see how that could help. I'm feeling more relaxed as we speak. Good. Oh, and one more thing. It's not a good idea to leave the room before the time is up, even if you have finished all the questions. Spelling, grammar and punctuation mistakes can make a difference to your marks. So try to leave some time at the end for checking your answers. I don't think I'll be leaving early somehow. Look... You've been really helpful. I'm very grateful. Not at all. You're welcome. Just remember that you've worked hard on your preparation and you are familiar with the exam. Think positively and stay calm. I'm sure you will do well. Good luck for tomorrow. Thank you very much. That is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear part of a careers advice talk on working freelance. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Working for an employer in a 9 to 5 job has long been the accepted norm. However, this could soon be set to change. A rising level of unemployment, combined with a sense of disillusionment amongst employees with their workaday lives, is at the root of this modern day revolution in the workplace. Now, there is a growing trend amongst people of all ages and from all walks of life to opt for freelance work rather than working for an employer. 
It sounds a risky option and a potentially stressful one, but on the whole, the benefits of freelancing seem to vastly outweigh those of working for someone else. In fact, recent research has shown that those who quit their jobs to work for themselves are the country's happiest and most productive workers. A study conducted by Dr Jonathan Sapsed from Brighton University's Business School in conjunction with the Arts and Humanities Research Council looked at a total of 304 freelancers who were pursuing a range of professions in southern England. They found that, far from struggling to get by, many were not only doing well, but excelling in their new professions. So, what are the advantages of freelancing? Well, there are many. One of the most obvious benefits is not having to be answerable to a boss and having to face criticism or unfair demands. In addition, not being based in an office or shared workplace with competitive or difficult colleagues is another bonus. But what is probably the most attractive pull of working freelance is the freedom to determine your own work schedule. You are no longer at the mercy of a timetable dictated to you by your employer. If you have family commitments, these can easily be fitted around your working hours. Furthermore, if you have an off day one day, it's easy to make up time another day without having to face your employer's wrath when you are being less productive than usual. Those who work in creative and digital industries stand to benefit most from working freelance. In these fields, workers are at liberty to choose their ideal working location as they are not restricted to working in a set place. It really is an ideal lifestyle that many would aspire to if they were more aware of the options available to them. Lastly, to add to an already convincing list of benefits from doing freelance work, there is the financial reward. Freelancers typically work a 38-hour week and earn a median wage of £43,000, well above the national average of £25,000, and are happier than other workers. It seems that people are now catching on to the myriad benefits that come with working as a freelancer. Currently, there are about 31 million people in work in Britain, and already 4.6 million are self-employed, thereby displaying the vitality of the freelance economy. In fact, so popular is freelancing becoming that it has even been suggested that the government needs to devise a new tax and other policies to support freelancers. Freelancing would seem to be the future of employment and the way forward. It is certainly well worth considering freelancing if you are doubtful about committing to working in a structured environment and would like more freedom and autonomy in your work. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.